So good morning. When we look at all the semantic projects that we do with customers in France, it seems that more than half our customers are now doing uh, work uh, with a lot of text and a lot of unstructured data. And it seems that 99% of those customers are already using solar. Yeah? So we've got a lot of requests to integrate solar with Allegrograph. And I'm going to talk about it today. As of uh, version 4.5, available on the website, um, you can actually work uh, with solar um, in many different ways. And what you see on the picture is our normal architecture overview. And what you see is that our, our query engine is now aware of solar. Um, <coughs> the Sparkle and the Prolog are, are aware of solar, but also stored procedures. And you can access solar through our own REST interface. Yeah? So we've gone pretty far now with, with that integration. Um, but I first want to say that um, if you're just doing uh, work with triples and text, you not always do have to use solar, because we have a really good um, transactional uh, free text indexer built in. And for example, you can first load your triples and then afterwards determine what kind of text indices you want. Or you can beforehand say, oh, I want to have free text indexing for these predicates, and then they will all be loaded. Uh, while loading, the, or they will be free te text indexed while loading the triple, so completely dynamic. Um, I'll show you in a minute a very flexible user interface to create these new indices. And you can have multiple indices per store. Uh, we have stemmers, we do tokenizers, we support Chinese and Japanese, do sound search, and we can do all the kind of queries you might uh, expect that we support. And fully integrated with Sparkle and, and, uh, and Prolog. And um, I hate to say it, but it's actually faster than Lucene, both for indexing and for retrieving, because it's built in the store itself. Yeah. So um, I just want to start with that. So let me see how you do it. So if you are in a Lego graph web view, talking to the server, then you just say create a index. You call it demo in this case. You specify the predicates you want to index, whether you want to do the, 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 the literals yes or no or only literals of a certain type. You can specify what part of the resources you want to index. Maybe you want to do the full index, or only the part after the pound or a slash. Um, you can specify what fields to index, minimum word length. You can have stop words. You can have word, word filters. And when you're done, you will have a, uh, a text index. I can click on queries and do a text query. So I would just type in like something like Obama, healthcare, and fear mongering. Um, and then do search, and you would get all your results here, like you normally get in the Lego graph. Yeah? Or you can use it in Sparkle, so you can say, give me every text in P where the text matches Obama healthcare fear mongering, where the text has the government person P, and you would get your results. Yeah? So it's a full flex text index, but we also realize it's a solar and Lucene world, and I actually like solar a lot. So about uh, a year ago, we started with the integration process, and we're now happy that it's now fully supported in the 4.5. Now, I guess that almost every person on the call already knows what Solar is, yeah, and how it's actually a wrapper around Lucene. Um, that in Solar, it's not just one index, but you can have multiple tags for a particular text or for a particular entry. And it's completely REST-based, so it very easily fits into any other architecture. And um, the reason why people like Solar is it supports many more languages than uh, that we support. And it's a very flexible Python architecture for tokenizers and stemmers. So if you are a Java programmer, um, then you can just write your own tokenizers, your own stemmers, um, and whatever you want. And you can link it in the pipeline, and it will work. Uh, straight in solar. Um, then many people now want to have, uh, when they search for certain words, they also would like to search on the synonyms of these words. And solar supports it. You can have synonym lists. And then when you search for word A, you will get synonym B too. Uh, you can do relevancy ranking. So you can say, if I look for two words, then the first word, then rank my results based on, for example, the, that the first uh, word appears more higher in the list than the other ones. You can make certain words more important. 
Uh, this is the feature that I like, find words close together. So you can say find the word party and weekend together within 10 words, and uh, you will get all the texts. Um, you can do faceted search. You can apply text clustering algorithms, etc., etc. Yeah, so it's really got a full set of wonderful features. And then even if you integrate solar with Allegro Graph, there still is the uh, the solar admin page. So just to show you, can you can start up your solar uh, admin page on your local host or wherever your solar is. You type your query string, and here you see how you normally get your results back from solar as XML. You see the query you did and then you see all the documents with their ID that contains the thing that you were looking for. Um, just to give you an idea how powerful Solar and Lucene queries are, are I, I have a list here. Yeah. So if in your Solar document you, give, uh, you have multiple tags per entry, then you can search in, in both. So you can say, give me from all the titles the right way and from the main text the word go. You can use wildcards. Um, you can do fuzzy search, so if you say Rome and then tilde, then it probably will return both Rome and Rome's. If you would do Rome 0.8, it might give you only one word back. Uh, you can say give me all, you can do proximity search, you can say give me all the texts back that have Jakarta and Apache within 10 words. You can search within uh, date ranges, uh, alphabetical ranges. Here you see some examples of boosting, where the word Jakarta is more important than Apache. Um, you can specify if something has to be included or should not be included, etc., etc. Yeah, so a fairly uh, powerful query language. Okay, so let me start with some demos. Or, and the first demo is uh, actually the typical kind of project um, that our customers do. Yeah, so. And the example that I'm going to show is uh, we started with creating a database of federal politicians, uh, people that have been in my webcast have seen this demo before. We spider all the news sources for each politician each day. You get a bunch of text back from the web. Um, you take each text and store it both in Solar and Allegro Graph. You make sure that the Solar entry <coughs> has an ID tag and Allegro Graph has as a predicate called France has Solar ID and they both refer to the same number. And then the next step, we extract all the entities from the text, like places, people, organizations, and dates. And we link these entities to the linked open data cloud and to the politician's database. And then we can do fairly rich semantic queries over the total set of data, what's in Prolog or in Sparkle 1.1. So let me show that. So here's the, um, here is the, uh, Graph, which is official interface um, on, top, on top of Allegro Graph, so I've everything full text indexed, so I can say look for Diana Feinstein, and here's Diana Feinstein, and I can look at the triples for the end Feinstein, and you can see I've got a lot of metadata, like the current committee she's on, uh, um, the education she had, the, her faith, her family life and all the text that she appeared in a certain day, and I could click on the text, and then you see the things that we got with an entity extracted out of the text. So, for, for example, this is, the, this is the government people that I found in the text, um, some important words in the text, some organizations that I found, um, some places that we found in the text, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah? So I hope you get an idea of what we have in the data. And then when we do queries, Oh, I thought I had the query here. Then I can do queries like this. Um, Obama. So this is the query where we say, find, every, find in all the words we have in this database, the text that have Obama and military, oh, sorry, Obama and military. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is a prologue, and after this I will do a, a Sparkle example. But here we say, find every text that has Obama and military, where this text has a government person, P1 and P2, where P1 is a Republican and P2 is a Democrat, yeah, where both people are on a committee, where this committee has the same super committee. We do the query, we get a result, 
and then we can look at the results. Yeah? So here we look at John McCain and Carl Levin and some of the committees that we have for them. Um, I could look for Obama and Love. And we get a completely other set of people here and probably also a whole bunch of other committees, etc. Yeah, so this is one simple example of how you start your query with the solar query, <coughs> and then you continue with doing queries over the entities that you extracted out of the text. Um, <coughs> and this is the, the template that we see most often. So we go back. So, <coughs> as I said, this is the pattern. We have spiders that are intelligently controlled to go out to uh, the web, email, internal documents, etc. Use a text extractor. Maybe we translate it. Uh, we classify it. We put it through an entity extractor, and then we put the stuff in the Lego graph and so on in the scene, yeah, where we also link the entities to the linked open data cloud. So that's roughly the architecture that we see. And this is the query. I just put it in this presentation because we we'll put this presentation on the web, so you have it available. Then the second demo, which is, a, in this case, a much larger data set, it's the Enron database. I guess that the, at least all the American attendants know what Enron was. It's a, a, a company in California in the energy business that uh, tried to make the California energy users happy. And we have about 500,000 emails from about 150 people. Um, those emails were collected in the, in the lawsuit. Uh, we store every email, both in LegoGraph and Solar, and let me give you some examples. So where is my here? So I go to um, our website, sorry, the, the, uh, an internal server where we have the website up. I go to the Enron database. Yeah. You see at the bottom that we have actually managed internal solar free text indices. So here you see our, the address of our solar um, server. And you see that we use ID in solar as a joint variable. Um, but let me go to the query. So I have a query. And for example, danger words from Enron, non-Enron. So what you see here is the query we did with a, a law firm where we said, OK, look at this query. Let's start slowly. We have one prefix that looks a little bit weird. We have to say a prefix France option, yeah? Where we say there's a solar query limit of 100. Means if you do a solar query, only return the first 100 results. You can make it as big as you want. And then we continue with the query where we say, OK, in solar, find every email that matches in the body these words and phrases. Yeah, so this is a single word, this is a phrase, and this is actually a very, very, very long uh, string of words. Uh, all, all the kind of words that a lawyer finds interesting. Yeah? So we find these emails, and then for each email, we find a sender, and then for that particular email address, we look at the company where it came from. So we're looking for emails that have these words that come from Enron, Enron and that went to a recipient that is not Enron. Yeah? So this is the overall query that we can do. Um, and then, of course, you can play with this. So you can say, well, uh, there's a lot of emails in this database that were about parties. Um, I think this was about 10, 10, 15 years ago. It was at the time when people were not aware that everyone was reading your emails. Nowadays, I guess, it's, uh, people are a lot more careful, certainly after this lawsuit. So for example, we can say, give me all the emails that about party. And so here you see a bunch of emails from an Enron guy to a non-Enron guy that contains the word party. Uh, or you can say, let me get uh, party um, and weekend, uh, party weekend. And I want it within 10 words. Yeah? So give me, from the body, all the emails that have the word party and weekend within 10 words of each other. And I do the query. And I couldn't look at a particular email. And here you see the email that was sent. Yeah, or any other email, party. Anyway, I, I guess you get the point. You can look for words like... Um, 
give me from the body energy. Well, probably won't get anything, although oh, someone misspelled energy. But in general, <laughs> okay, let me make it worse. Yeah, energy. Probably no one that misspelled en energy. Energy. Ah, okay. So now let's turn this into a more uh, fussy result. Yeah, and now you see that somehow someone did inner oh yeah energ one dot doc so here is something that kind of personally works with energy yeah so yeah I could go on and on but I already showed you in PowerPoint all the kinds of queries you can do but I also hope you see the power where you on the one hand match against all the text so this of course could also be the subject of an email or the sorry I don't know let's see if this works yeah, so here's some things where, where subject is in the email, where the, this misspelling of energy is in the, in the, in the subject header, etc. And then you continue with the things that you, with the meta information about the email. All right, so now, what if you want to do this yourself? Right, let me see, how do I go back? Yeah, so if you want to play with this yourself, then <clears throat> the first thing is, you install Solar 3.5. I think the slightly earlier versions and certainly the later versions all will work too. It's fairly stable. Then you create a schema for the predicates you want to use in Solar. So for Enron, this is what we used. Of course, this is an important one, like the ID, because that's we use the um, the join variable. We say it's a string. It's indexed. Stored is true. Is actually an interesting parameter because when you store Emails um, in, I mean, if, if you want to store the emails, you have a choice whether you want to store the emails in Allegro Graph, in Solar, or in both. Yeah, and in Allegro, in, in in Solar, you actually can say stored is nil, and then it only would index it, but not store the uh, uh, the say the body of the text in here, and that would save you a lot of space. Anyway, you get the point. Then you start the Solar Server. Um, and then you tell AG Web you where the server is and how you want to join on Solar. I think I already pointed that. You click in AG Web View what particular database on this link here, manage external solar pretext indexer, and then you specify the location and the join variable. And then then you have to go I mean then there's two ways you can go forward. One way is to do it the simple static thing. So you uh, you first load all the Enron data into Allegro Graph. And, um, well, I guess we'll make the Enron database available as a triple data set. Um, and then you loop through all the emails and add some of the email triples also to Solar. Yeah. Important, you match the Solar ID so to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the triple in Allegro Graph. Yeah. So in Solar, you add ID 1200 ID. And in um, Electro graph, you say France text something has the solar ID 1200, and this makes will make sure that things work together. <clears throat> what we found that if solar is slow, then it really helps in Linux set the limit to at least 100,000. And um, please don't add one email at a time because that's really slow. So we found that the optimal rate for us for this annual data set was to do about 100 emails per solar commit, and we did in solar optimize for every 50,000 emails. Yeah, so this is a typical format for how you add something. You have to tag add, and you get a dog, and then you a, a doc, and then you get a bunch of fields, and then they add again. You can do it as JSON too, or okay, okay. So the first way to, to do it is just a simple static. But of course, in real life, what usually happens is that things come into real time. So I just want to point out that we haven't yet made it completely automatic. Yeah, to store both things in. So I'm just too afraid. I mean, there's too many things that you have to do with solar, yeah? And we don't want to be responsible for that yet. And so you as the programmer are responsible for, one, doing the transactions both in solar and a Lego graph and check if both succeeded. Um, and we can and, and just give us an email if you want to help with that. And you as the programmer have to keep track of the ID number. So that's if you want to do it the dynamic way. Any questions? And yes, I'll, the most important question that I know you'll ask is, uh, can you make this automatic? So again, I already gave the answer. 
We'll make it more automatic in the future. Tell us how you want it, but please realize that you are probably in the future going to remain um, um, responsible for um, your whole solar setup. Okay, question, Steve. Let me read it. <coughs> yeah, it's often the same. At uh, first questions, will a recording be available later? Yes. The second question is, <coughs> so if I use NLP to extract concepts from a paragraph of text and put it into the triple store, will it be easy to make it viewable as facets in solar? Uh, oh, hi, Matt. Um, well, right now, we use... Uh, solar for the facets. We also have, a, in, in, in a future version, you will have a faceted, uh, in the product, a faceted browser for Lego Graph 2. We already have an internal one, but we're still working on it. So uh, the second question was, do you use solar as an alternative concept factor? No, we just use it as a text indexer. Then the other question is, what if I already have several solar instances and I want to link that to data in Allegro Graph. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's another way you can do it. You can first load all your data in solar and use that as your main repository. Then you just loop. So I'm assuming that you have some tag that is kind of unique and, it's, and I hope it's a, a something like an auto increment so you can loop through it and then you would just retrieve all those from solar, do your, say, your entity extraction or whatever you want to do, and store the metadata in Allegro Graph. Another question is, not quite understanding how it works at runtime. Is Allegro Graph generating the solar query after parsing the sparkle and sending it to solar? Well, actually, what happens is, in Sparkle, you see this thing called solar uh, column match which is a magic predicate. So basically what happens is that what Sparkle does when it parses the query, it sees that line, says, oh, this is a, a magic predicate. It will, for solar, <clears throat> so it will pass the entire string to solar. It will get a bunch of IDs back, and then the Lego graph will translate those IDs in the, um, the numbers that we put on the predicate uh, France has solar ID. Probably could have explained that better, but I hope you get the idea. The other one is, what would it take to do a similar integration with Artifio or Elasticsearch? Uh, that would be very, very straightforward. Yeah, that would be, um, I mean, just for us, or, 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 or to do something for you, that would just be a few days of work. Uh, because it's just, well, probably the same principle that we use for solar. Okay, let's keep it at this. Okay, thank okay. you, Hans.